My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we are going to be looking at um, an age-old myth, in a sense, on motorcycles and stuff like that. So basically we're going to start looking at, do some bits on suspension, um, chop and change, like, you know, like I like to do, brake suspension, engine, blah, 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 blah. Um, so we have the SV, oh, like I said, I'm going to have to excuse the wind, there's nothing I can do about it, Jesus, you can't stop it. Um, so basically... Uh, we are taking the SV1000 apart. She's going to get track biked. I've been talking about this. Um, we've done all this already, which is not really much. Just take the subframe off, take the exhausts off, blah, 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 and all the fairings and stuff, and we'll get to that. Uh, actually, I had an idea. We're actually going to get Isaac to do a lot of this um, because <sighs> we can, you know what I mean? It's something he can play, play a bit around on, um, you know, because it is what it is. It's not like he's having to go on the Z9 or out shit like that. Any road. So, without all that blah, 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 um, just trying to keep people current with what's going on. Um, what we've got here is, um, we've got the rear shock in there. I've loosened the, you'll see all this closer up, but I've loosened the lock ring off. And then with the C spanner, we can get at the um, actual nut that adjusts the preload of the shock. Now, I've got it on the paddock stand the tire is just missing the floor, and I mean literally just. There must be uh, three or four millimeters. This is so we can have the bike upright, sat on the bike or sat on the stand. Doesn't really make too much of a difference. Um, what we're looking for here is a change. It does make a slight difference because we're not sat at the rear axle. Um, what we've got here is I've got a screw that's just screwed into a part of the frame with a bit of tape as an indicator, you'll see that level on, and then we've got this scale here as a stand. So all I'm gonna do is just basically flick over to the other side, I'll show you the setup, flick over to the other side, and basically just move, change the preload. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to loosen off the preload, um, just because it's easier, <laughs> more than anything, and we'll see what the change is at this indicator. So I'll give you a bloody wind, I'll give you a close-up picture of where we are right now. Um, we are literally at uh, 630 millimetres. It doesn't matter exactly um, how we're sat on the floor, just as long as we don't move this, we keep this in the same location. It doesn't really matter. It's clamped down on some blocks on the floor uh, just to stop it blowing away, stuff like that. Um, what we're looking for is a change. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, back off the preload, so basically extend the spring. Now, if this changes your ride height, we'll see a change. You know what I mean? We can extrapolate from there how much we're going to go. So we're also going to measure how far we move this to see what kind of change we see in height. At the end of the day, yes, you're looking at ride height, but because this is where the subframe is mounted, your seat will go up and down regardless. Exactly how much isn't spot on, so let's just say, for example, you wind out this preload by 10 millimeters and it changes the ride height by 50 millimeters. That isn't a scale for everyone's bike and blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter. We're looking at does change, does changing the preload on your spring change your ride height? Right then, so you can see there we're about six, well, pretty much bang on 630. You can see the ruler move a bit and you can see the tape. That's actually pretty much solid, is that, with that bolt sat in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to wind off the preload and I'm in a sense, I'm going to leave you at this position. So I'm just going to basically master a pull out a bit and then basically just move you so you can see me do all of it. Give me that laughing boy. Right then, so... Oh, do you know what we fucking forgot to do? We forgot to fucking take that off, haven't we? Twat! Turn it off. Dropping. Every time. Every time. Right then, now we've sorted out that fiasco. Um, why did I put that bloody lock in uh, C-span? Fucking hell. Yeah, it's fucking madness, isn't it? <laughs> there it is. Fuck's sake. Every bloody week. Somewhere else, isn't it? Oh, fucking I'm getting all microphone caught up here. Oh, hang about. What we, the other thing we wanted to do as well is measure where that is, don't we? How the fuck am I going to do that? 
Oh, I know what we'll do is we'll stick a, a caliper in between the two, the lock ring and the uh, jobby. Oh, caliper, fuck it, let's we'll use a bloody good old school ruler. If I can, I can't get in there, can I, you cock? So, I can always bend it. So we are 19, 19 millimetres off. That's how far we are. Right, so there, we've moved the lock ring a bit, but we've got back in there, six mil or something, shit like that. Yeah, so we're about eight mil, but we probably moved that lock ring maybe about one, two. Um, just because of the fucking stupid C-spanner that I have. Um, regardless, what have we moved? We've moved one, two, three, three millimetres. So we have moved, let's just say 10 mil. We've moved 10 millimetres here and that's given us three millimetres. Three millimetres in total. You're not going to notice that. You're not going to notice that, exactly. Three millimetres you are just not going to notice. The other thing is as well is when you now sit on this bastard, the travel of the spring is going to go down, which actually does make it easier to ride. You have not only lowered the bike, we've lowered the bike by three millimetres, but it's when you come to sit on it. Now, it's a shame we don't have the subframe and all of it. We haven't done that original setup anyway. But when you come to sit on this, this is going to be really, really squashy because the spring is nearly its free length. So it's not going to take much weight to start to compress that spring. So it not only you, you're three millimetres, which is fuck all. However, when you sit on the bike, she's going to bottom out a lot easier. There's one problem with that, though, and that means that your suspension is going to be spongy and all over the fucking place. And this is kind of one of the problems with doing this so if you are having problems reaching the ground um, adjusting your preload is not a good thing to do now if you are usually shorter you're usually lighter um, which generally means that you're you you haven't got enough mass so it's not going to bounce as much but generally this is not a good way to do this the best way to lower your bike is to change the linkage on the dog bones will basically show you that when we pull this all apart um, and how much of a difference that makes by putting some different dog bones on. Uh, no, no, it's fine. You leave it there. Um, yeah, so basically what we'll do is we'll uh, change. I'll, I'll cut some dog bones, right, crude little fucking shitty ones, just as an example. And how much will you have to change or we'll basically put this back to where it was, its original stance, measure that. And then what we'll do is we'll, you know, look at the dog bone difference and how much a, a, the dog bones can change your ride height. Basically what the ratio is. Now that ratio will only apply just to this bike and this suspension setup, but that is the way to go because you are not adjusting your preload on your spring, which is not just designed for you, it's designed for the bike as well. It's designed for the swing arm geometry, uh, the mass distribution, stuff like that. So the lesson here is yes to all those people who said, adjusting your preload on your spring doesn't change your ride height it does and if you get on the bike you are going to notice a massive difference because the spring is just going to squash because it's not going to take much force to start to get this uh, spring to move yes the spring rate is not changing but the preload soaks up some of that initial um, springiness in the spring you know if you get a spring that's this long and then you compress it to this and lock it there and then go like that to press or if you have it this long and then just push there, 
takes a lot less force and in this case it's your mass so you know it's not worth doing that dog bones is the way to go not only that is weirdly enough the dog bones is a lot easier to change than fucking around we had a right fucking laugh getting this collar off she was stuck stuck it's a shame i didn't record that but shit happens any road so there you are there's the the visual proof it's negatable like i say three millimeters is fuck all the biggest difference you'll feel is as the bike squats down as you sit on it um but again you're now doing something that's uh, as far as three millimeters goes your seat will squash that especially if you get a new bike your seat will squash by three millimeters in a couple of months um dog bones is the way to go hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit